And if these strikes were covered by mainstream corporate media, it'd be met with like a lot of confusion and rage. You know, they would, they would sit there and be like, why are these people not wanting to go to work? I mean, who doesn't want to work for a living? I mean, sure, these bosses are making them cover like their own health care and protective equipment and like paying them virtually nothing and you know have like really strict corporate rules that give budding dictators new ideas you know <laughs> we created a commercial what more right. we, we, they roll out the guillotine <laughs> <laughs> yeah we banned they banned organizing which kind of makes the word work sound like a little bit of a joke you know but but i mean really what could they complain about you know when when all their work is making a trust fund kid even richer, you guys. Yeah. What that is? No, there's so much. No. Welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Uh, hey, so you might, uh, you might hear some laughter in the background of this episode, and that's because it was recorded in front of a live virtual stand-up comedy audience uh, via Zoom. I've been doing uh, these uh, live virtual stand-up comedy shows called the Citizen Revolution Comedy Shows, and then they eventually get recorded, and then they become the episodes of Fork Full of Noodles that you are watching today. They happen uh, almost every single Friday night, uh, and they're going to be happening all through July, all through August, and well into the fall as well, since we are in the, the digital age of the quarantine. So I've, I've pivoted a lot of my performances uh, to be online and to be via Zoom. So if you are interested in being a part of the live virtual stand-up comedy audience, I hope you do. Uh, you, can, you can get those tickets uh, right in the link below, or the description below, not the link below, the description below. Uh, you can click on the link and that'll take you to all of the ticket links uh, for all of the dates that uh, are available in July and August. And you can keep an eye on the dates and keep up to date with uh, when I'm gonna be doing uh, fringe festivals and other live performances uh, via Zoom virtually um, on my website at krishmohan.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N.com. Uh, so go and check it out there. And if you would like to uh, support the show, if you would like to support uh, all of the other projects I do from uh, the interview podcast to the rantier videos to the you know shorter current events, new segments that I do, uh, you can be become a sustaining member right on my website uh, via my website or Patreon or Bandcamp. Uh, or you can make a one-time donation as well. Uh, this is how I am currently earning my uh, earning my living. So this is uh, th that would be that'd be super helpful <laughs> if you guys decided to become sustaining members. And I uh, hope that you do. I hope that you come to the to live stand-up comedy show. And now, without any further ado, let's dive into this week's episode. General strike. All right. This isn't the name of like another Confederate general whose statue has to be taken down, you know, or graffito tag with the word fuck with racist written on there. That's not what it is. Uh, general strikes are a massive tactic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're a massive tactic employed by the labor movement when the bosses don't want to negotiate and they start delegitimizing unions. It's when unions and workers from every industry and every line of employment stand together to ensure that equal human rights are achieved for everyone. It's the ultimate demonstration of solidarity among the working class, and it scares the living shit out of all of the oligarchs. The end. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not, that's not the end. Show's that's over. crazy. Show's over, everybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, thanks, yeah. Chris. Real quick nice. one, guys. Uh, <laughs> general strikes are great. They scare the oligarchy. What else do we have to say? No, we have, there's a lot. <laughs> in the age of the quarantine, we've seen about uh, a thousand strikes in America since March, 
uh, since March of 2020, just, just since the March of 2020, according to a website called Payday Report, uh, who, are, who are essentially talking about strikes, right? They're talking about what strikes are happening and where they're happening. Now, these include wildcat strikes, which, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, are when uh, employees just walk out of their work and, and, and they leave. Uh, what it is not is when a worker pretends to be like a jaguar from the Amazon. Uh, some people thought that's what it was. I, I didn't think that's what it was, but like some people did, you know, and like, I just want to like clear up what a wildcat strike is. Cause some people think it's like when you transform into like an actual wild cat, but it's, but it's super, I didn't think that if everybody, if you guys think like I thought that. Oh my God. I, that was amazing. <laughs> Now, these strikes also included sick outs, solidarity protests with the Black Lives mm -hmm. Matter movement, rent strikes, and various, various other coordinated actions. On May Day, which is May 1st, uh, celebrated uh, all around the world except uh, in America, uh, mm -hmm. we saw 48 <laughs> states that uh, essentially had some kind of action that was a launching pad to get us to uh, a general strike. And it included striking against corporations and so much more. This is Kali Akuno. He's uh, part of Cooperation Jackson. He, he talks about uh, what the May Day protests were. Uh, there were actions that took place uh, by my reckoning, and we are still learning, uh, quite honestly, about things that occurred in little nooks and crannies in small towns and mid-sized towns uh, all throughout the country. Uh, but what we know so far is that there were actions in uh, 48 of the 50 states. Uh, they range from workplace actions that were done by uh, postal workers, dock workers, uh, workers at Amazon, Instacart, Whole Foods, Target, um, Trader Joe's, uh, Safeway, uh, meat packaging plants, and, and uh, sanitary workers in, in several cities, uh, including the ongoing piece, which is now happening in uh, New Orleans with sanitation workers uh, going on strike there. Uh, it also included tens of thousands, if not perhaps millions of renters uh, and homeowners all throughout the country who went on strike, not paying rent or not paying their mortgage and doing it in an organized manner where they actually work together, pull together. One of the greatest examples is right there uh, where you're at in, in uh, New York City, or where you're based at in New York City, uh, where in Queens there were over 17 uh, tenement buildings that combined together to actually pull together uh, uh, a rent strike. Uh, but these happened in, in virtually every uh, state, and folks took to calling their, their banks and their, their lenders uh, and telling them that they were actually on strike and that they were standing together uh, and that they could not pay and would not pay until certain demands were met. Uh, so it was very broad in its, in its character. Uh, we also are still getting reports on actions that took place uh, in several prisons. We know that in, particularly in California, uh, there was a hunger strike organized by several women prisoners, uh, but we've also heard of prison actions in, in uh, Georgia, here in Mississippi, uh, but also in several other states. And there were also actions that were taken inside several of the detention centers uh, as well. So a lot of stuff on May Day. Um, not only that, but we also had employees of GE that demonstrated to stop building jet engines and shift their efforts to making protective equipment like ventilators and masks for the healthcare industry. And the bosses at GE, well, they, they, just, they just clutched their pearls, right, and freaked out and, and demanded that these workers stop being communist. You just... You get out of here with that communism, guys. Don't forget, look, logic and intelligence shackle your freedoms. That's just what they do, okay? But, but the bosses shackling you to do repetitive tasks for little to no pay is, is what a soaring bald eagle actually feels like, you guys. <laughs> that's just that's what bald eagles feel like, you know? Liberty, <laughs> as liberty is only achieved when you do what you're told and lick all of the boots. That's what liberty is. 
Yeah. And the more boots you lick, the more liberty points you get. And the closer you get to becoming a bald eagle, which is the American dream. Otherwise known as Charlie Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> Now, in Pittsburgh, uh, my hometown of Pittsburgh and New Orleans, Louisiana, sanitation workers uh, went on strike to get hazard pay, paid sick leave, and protective equipment like masks and gloves. Their reasoning was pretty simple, like, uh, right, they have to pick up the literal trash of the people during a pandemic, and that's a necessary but dangerous job, so they deserve to be protected and get paid right. Right? And, and they even said that they want to do the job. They're, they they want to contribute to society. You know? And it's not like they came out and just started screaming, right? We, we shall no longer pick after your half-eaten hot pockets and use condoms. <laughs> you know, we, we demand that we get Tony Stark's armor. <laughs> we demand that Tony Stark build us the same armor that he had in Iron Man 3. <laughs> <laughs> was too. Yeah, which was the uh, which was the film where he made the most amount of Iron Man. I don't know why they vaguely sound like John F. Kennedy, but that's fine. That's just what they sound like. Also, I gotta say, uh, fellas, uh, can we learn how to dispose condoms the right way? You know, <laughs> gonna wrap that shit up in like two to three tissues just to make sure nothing's leaking. <laughs> Oh, here comes the tutorial. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Let me, yeah. Go, go get my banana. <laughs> Look, we are an evolved species, and I think it's about damn time that we started acting like it, right? Mm. You know, like Jesus said, wrap it before you tap it, but also <laughs> wrap the wrap afterwards. You know, that's important. And I believe he said that uh, right after he for sure banged Mary Magdalene. That dude definitely... Oh. Hold up, Chris. I'm going to get the Bible. Uh, yeah, are you getting it? Yeah. <laughs> Fact check me on that, but I'm uh, almost sure that he did. Uh, 33 years, he's not getting laid? Come on. That dude was ripped to shit. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so, back to the sanitation workers. Uh, the Democratic mayor of Pittsburgh, uh, Bill Peduto, said virtually nothing about giving into the workers' demand. He came out and made some platitudes. In New Orleans, the workers were fired and then replaced by prisoners to do the work to get them paid pennies on the dollar, right? And the mayor of New Orleans had a very clear response, right? He went up on stage and he said, listen, the economy, and then he dropped the mic and then a prisoner had to recycle it for free. Now, most of these strikes were not covered by mainstream corporate media. And if these strikes were covered by mainstream corporate media, it'd be met with like a lot of confusion and rage. You know, they would, they would sit there and be like, why are these people not wanting to go to work? I mean, who doesn't want to work for a living? I mean, sure, these bosses are making them cover like their own health care and protective equipment and like paying them virtually nothing and you know, have like really strict corporate rules that give budding dictators new ideas, you know? <laughs> we created a commercial. What more? Right. We, we, Roll out the guillotine. <laughs> yeah. We banned, they banned organizing, which kind of makes the word work sound like a little bit of a joke, you know? But, but I mean, really, what could they complain about, you know? When, when all their work is making a trust fund kid even richer, you guys. Yeah. What that is, you, these workers Aww. are just being selfish and not giving into the greed of the uber rich. <laughs> <laughs> They're being it's so good. mean. They're being so mean. Now look, the strikers are not asking for over the top <laughs> demands, right? They're basically asking for human rights especially on May Day, right? The May Day, the demands of the collective strike effort was asking for better consideration of health and safety, livable wages, protective gear, uh, deep cleaning of a lot of these facilities, you know? Uh, the, but the CEOs, they look at these, these demands as, as, as an act of, you know, pure insanity, right? The, the striking workers out there say, we want health care. 
And the CEOs respond with, well, that is the moon, what you're asking for right there. <laughs> oh, oh, God. I believe you're basically asking for the moon. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'd like, we'd like a livable wage, you know, to help us keep with the rising cost of like rent and food and water. Right. Well, now you're just, now you're just asking for the rings of Saturn itself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Wait, I mean, come on. What do you what do you think? I'm made out of money? Get out of town. Yeah, I mean, kind of. Yeah. You just made... Oh, 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 God. You, you kind of just made like $24 billion, which is, I think... <laughs> which I think is like replacing most of your molecules with cash. <laughs> also, we'd like some corporate transparency. <laughs> Out of control. Now you're just asking for Pluto to be a planet again. And <laughs> look, I can't change the laws of the universe. Oh, God. For I am but one man or woman because greed knows no gender, you guys. <laughs> very progressive, this greed. Very, very progressive. It's awesome. <laughs> So, now look, the Republicans have come out and, and they call these striking workers things like lazy, right? And, and, and basically come out and say things like human rights don't belong in the workplace, just like women. Yeah, that's the Republican <laughs> attitude. Look, according to the Republicans, people have the right to work. And that's about it. That's as far as they go with that one, right? <laughs> Which... All these right to work laws are basically like the legislative equipment uh, equivalent of, uh, you know, you got time to lean, you got time to clean. That's basically <laughs> what they did. Human rights also apparently don't belong in the streets either, and neither do women. <laughs> Look, human yeah. rights belong in your mind, right? According to Republicans, human rights are made up, they're an intangible concept. And, and they're very much open to interpretation. Now, if everybody could please open up their Bibles, that would, <laughs> that would be awesome. Now, the Democrats, on the other hand, um, like to placate to the working class, right? They call them essential workers. You know, they threw up these banners that said, heroes work here. Amazing. You know, on a legislative level, they have failed by declining Medicare for all, ignored a universal basic income, and then you know, went on vacation. That's literally what they did. <laughs> but it's a, but they did they did pass like increased unemployment just for a little bit, just for like a teeny amount, and then offered everybody, you know, like a one time payment of twelve hundred dollars that that uh, that we were all supposed to live on for a very long time. <laughs> So bribery. Yeah. But look, uh, even, even with those things, right. Uh, even with the $1,200, the expansion of the unemployment program, a ton of people fell through the cracks and didn't receive either. For example, sex workers wow. who don't, yeah, who don't qualify for any of these benefits because there's a moral morality clause in the bailout bill, uh, that is connected to the purient sexual nature of their job. Well, hold on a minute. Didn't the banks get bailed out after Congress <laughs> people <laughs> like deep throated the Wall Street bulls balls? <laughs> <laughs> isn't isn't that isn't that purient sexual nature? <laughs> you know? And I and I don't think that they got the bulls consent to do that. You guys. I wasn't the Wolf of Wall Street half documentary anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, exactly. <laughs> But look, guys, it's totally cool. All that is, is completely fine because the Democrats did approve a $1.32 million display of American exceptionalism by flying fighter jets in honor of healthcare workers. Wait, I'm sorry, healthcare heroes. Because look, heroes don't need to get paid as much because they're doing it for the love of the game. Okay. You had me at fighter jet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's where a lot of people were. 
You know, do you really think Spider-Man, who, you know, who I'm repping over here, do you really think Spider-Man's cashing a check with his heroics? No. <laughs> he works for Raytheon, bro. <laughs> yeah, George, Spider-Man is working three other jobs because he's passionate about saving lives, you guys. He's passionate about it. That's why he's doing it. As my friend Eleanor Goldfield points out, sex sells, but war pays. Now, and think about that. That's a, very, that's a very apt statement, right? Who doesn't get hot and bothered when we see an ad with a bosomy lady riding a bomb, right? You got to buy that bomb because your boner has demanded it. But remember that lady, she sees, she sees nothing from those bomb sales because she's a godless whore, okay? She's a spoil of war. She's a, she's a, god, she's a goddess of war. Uh, look, this is America, all right? We are a Christian nation where, where we believe in the sanctity, emphasis on titty, uh, the sanctity of life, and it's valued, okay? In America, we cherish life by running an economy on creating weapons that regulate that life by murdering just like a lot of it, you know? Because this is America, you guys. That's how we work. Now, this is really what happens when you run an economy on war and fuel it with anti-intellectualism and nationalistic pride, right? $1.32 million could have paid for 66 ventilators, over a million masks, and an additional 1,100 people could have received $1,200, which is crazy. So when Legislation declines worker safety and rights. You've basically deeply started engaging with disaster capitalism. And that's why right now it's absolutely necessary that we need a general strike. And that has been your fork full of noodles for this week. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, if you like the content that we're putting up on this channel, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to this channel. All three of those things help this channel grow, help uh, other people see this channel and discover this channel. Um, platforms like YouTube and Facebook and uh, you know other, uh, other platforms don't particularly like to show content like this, show um, engaging content that talks about history and the truth and what's actually going on with our system and, at, at hand. So uh, I depend on you guys, the viewers, that if you guys like it, to make sure that you hit the like and then make sure that you share it with uh, whoever you think is going to enjoy uh, content like this, whether it's a friend or a family member or an enemy, whoever it is, uh, you guys could share that with. That would be awesome. And make sure that you're subscribed. Um, I, there, there's the more people that subscribe to this channel, again, the more that it'll be shown to other people and the more updates you'll get from my channel. I release videos uh, pretty consistently, uh, at least uh, a few times a week. Um, I do a live stream uh, via my Facebook page uh, uh, two or three times a week as well, where you get to talk to me and interact with me while we go over some you know, news stories that might have fallen through the cracks or mainstream media just doesn't touch at all. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys do that. Uh, the other way that you can help support this show is uh, by making a financial contribution if that is uh, if that is possible for you to do, uh, it is it is not a necessity. Uh, all of my content is going to be available for free. Very little goes behind a paywall. But if you do become a sustaining member via my website, uh, via Patreon, or via Bandcamp, it does give you unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content that nobody else gets. That's a little perk. That's a little thing behind the paywall. Uh, you get early uh, access to full episodes of Forkful of Noodles. Like these are, these are segments of a much larger piece. You get the larger piece before anybody else does. You get early access to that. Uh, you get uh, free tickets to the live virtual stand-up comedy shows where these clips are from um, and, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. There's gonna be some merch coming up. Um, I'm, gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be releasing some new merch as well. So uh, keep your eyes uh, out peeled for that. And that'll be avail all will be available on my website at krishmohan.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N.com. Uh, I also have a new stand-up comedy album, and um, that is available on all of the platforms you get your comedy stuff from. And uh, one of the things I'm doing with these virtual stand-up comedy shows 
and the uh, merch sales, whether it's like the t-shirt stuff or if it's the album, is I am going to be donating half of the um, half of the sales to a grassroots organization, uh, you know, like a mutual aid or a particular a grassroots venue that I've worked with um, or, you know, uh, an independent journalist or uh, something along those lines, something grassroots, so people that are bringing you the truth and bringing you the information, people that I use as sources for, for, for my comedy and for these pieces as well. So, uh, you know, by, by contributing and, and buying tickets or, or buying merchandise or buying those albums, uh, you, you're, you're contributing to also help um, a grassroots organization grow. Uh, so that is, uh, that's a cool little perk that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do my part uh, during, during this crazy age that we're all living in. So uh, I hope you consider going through the links, uh, checking out what you want to uh, be a part of, checking out what you can donate to, um, and, uh, and help, uh, help, help this channel grow, uh, help me put food on the table, earn a living, all that sort of stuff. Um, and help the, some a, a grassroots organization um, grow and uh, you know find their path and what they're doing uh, to to make this place a better world for everybody. So um, stay tuned. There's a lot more content coming up on this channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for uh, being a subscriber or or considering becoming a subscriber for this, this channel. Uh, until the next video, uh, see you on the road.